Hi and welcome to the Happiness Safari podcast. My name is Nadine. I'm a Bikram Yoga travel teacher and happiness life coach and I help digital nomads to deal with their greatest challenges. In my 10 weeks coaching program, I help you to develop a daily routine no matter where in the world you are and I help you how to better organize your time to achieve your goals in your new energy, goals and dreams that you have not yet dared to dream of. I wish there would have been a podcast when I was younger. There were so many things I didn't know. And now when I listen to other podcasts, I think, oh my God, my life would have been so much easier. This is why I started this podcast to inspire you to live a happier, healthier life and get inspiration from other people's journeys. Today on the podcast, I speak to Gillen, a certified life coach specialized in relationships helping people build a strong and passionate relationship in which both partners are thriving and growing together is her mission. But her journey of finding happiness was also a bumpy one. This episode is for you if you are a parent or sometimes you think you are not good enough in your role or you sometimes wonder why your childhood pain is coming back up and you don't want to let this out on your children. But it's also for you if you want to have a loving relationship and need some good advice on creating it. Maybe you want to find peace in your heart. Anyways, this episode is for you. Gillan and I speak about long-term relationships and how not just to maintain them, but also how to rebuild them. We also speak about how we raise our children has changed and how childhood can affect us as parents. From today's episode, you will learn why it's important to take care of yourself, why it's important to tell your partner what you want and what you need, how to focus on the future instead of the past, why hurt people hurt people, why the perfect mother or wife doesn't exist and why that's okay, why we can choose again every day whom we're spending our lives with. I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome everyone to today's show of the Happiness Safari podcast and today I'm speaking to Gilan from Quebec and I'm so happy you're here. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm so grateful for uh, you to have me on your show today. <laughs> I'm so happy you could make the time. Gilan, please tell us um, yeah, who you are and what it is, what you do. I'm Guylaine Martin. I'm from Quebec, Canada, and I'm a life coach. Uh, at the moment, more specializing into uh, helping people with their relationship. Either mm -hmm. they are in a relationship or they want to have the relationship that they truly want to create. So that's what well, I do. I guess we will uh, yeah, go into that and uh, yeah, your story a little bit. Uh, later on and uh, today we're here to speak about happiness yeah we want to know your journey towards uh, happiness so how did it start for you where did it start when did it start for you tell us a little bit about you and your journey I would say my journey towards happiness was uh it's been a bumpy one uh mm. really because um I I'm a survivor, you know, um, I had uh, things that happened to me when I was uh, a young, young child that I, I had uh, some hurtful things really done to me. And uh, I had to uh, deal with that once I became, you know, a, a young adult and having my own kids, you know, I, I, uh, I had my kids in my 20s. And uh, so all that, you know, the hurt and the pain, some of it came up when uh, I was uh, a young mother. So all I really wanted was to truly have uh, find peace in my heart and f just be peaceful with myself, which mm -hmm. I never felt that I had that you know growing up there was always a part of me that I felt I didn't know why but I felt that it was um something was out of place I didn't feel that I belonged anywhere and uh that's how I grew up and um 
having my own kids, there are some things that came up, you know, uh, you go through the motions sometimes or something happens and it triggers something within yourself. And that's what happened to me. I had uh, a lot of situations that triggered parts of me that I wasn't aware that they were there. And uh, I became very, um, well, I hurt, you know, um, when you hurt, you hurt the people around you, whether you want it or not, or that you are aware of it or not. So I knew that I was hurting and I was hurting the people around me too. And uh, that was the driving force uh, for me to wanting to be better, feel better about myself and to heal and feel happy and at, at peace. So that's how it started for me. So my search mm. started there. Okay. And yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'm still in it, you know, it's like everybody, uh, we all are. life happens. Yeah. Life happens to you every day. It doesn't ask and uh, you just have to deal with what happens to you. But mm. Today, I know that I'm way stronger than I was, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, in my 20s. Today, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm getting to my 50s next year. So, uh, wow. yeah. Wow. I didn't want to ask. Yeah. You, did, yeah, you don't look like it. <laughs> well, yeah. So, um, but I am uh, stronger than I was in my 20s. And I'm at a place that I'm very happy of where I am and I'm happy uh, of where I am going because mm. I'm working on it every single day to find my happiness and my peace. Wow. And uh, so it, uh, it's a long journey and, but life is a journey and we can't, I guess for me, What helped me a lot was uh, learning not to be perfect because the way I was brought up, perfection, uh, I was always aiming for perfection mm -hmm. uh, to, I don't know, uh, maybe I thought somewhere that if I was perfect, I would be loved, you know, worthy of being loved for, but it's not being loved for who you are, it's for something that is unattainable. So mm. I was putting yeah. myself up for failure and yeah. it's, it yeah. was a hard, yeah, it was hard. And uh, that hurt a lot too. You know, uh, when you know that you can't never achieve what the goals that you, you give yourself, mm -hmm. there's, n it doesn't exist. You know, the pro perfect mother doesn't exist. The perfect wife doesn't exist. Uh, the perfect me doesn't exist. You know, the idea of the perfect me I had doesn't exist. So I had to make peace with being me, uh, saying that me being imperfect is perfect, just like that. And just to live with that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So yeah. it's... Um, And learning to be grateful. For me, gratitude, honestly, was something that I started at the end of my 20s. And mm -hmm. it helped me a lot to, uh, to focus on what I had and uh, what I was grateful for. Because uh, I wasn't brought up that way, you know, to see what the blessings I had in my life. So this is something I had to, uh, to learn to focus on and it hurt, uh, helped me a lot in my healing process yeah. and putting my pieces together and mending, you know? Yeah. Sorry. I have to stop you there because you said so many interesting things. First is that you said you wanted to be perfect because you thought then you would be loved. And I think that's something mm -hmm. many people can probably relate to. When did you come to that conclusion? Like, did you 
know it back then and then you try to change it or is that just a realization you're having now when you're looking back at that time no uh i rebelled against it honestly because i got to a point that i realized that whatever i do i did because i wanted to please you know the people um and um i wanted to please my my mother was the driving force uh you know she didn't she did the best she could with what she knew you know i love her to pieces and uh she was brought up that way so for her uh it was just normal you know to ask for you know uh perfection you know when you get a 98 you you uh you can you could have a hundred you know so it was just you know comments here and there and at in my late teens you know uh when i was about 19 19 20 i said you know what the heck with it because uh i rebelled against it basically i threw everything out the window because i said it's unattainable whatever i do i will never be able to achieve it because it's never going to be enough mm. so for me it was an act of rebellion against you know <laughs> like a lot of teenagers and young adults do you know mm. uh saying well i'm that is not what i want and this is something that for me it was important for with my kids not to put that on them uh so i never asked them you know uh, i never told them you could have had you know something better uh the way i approached it with my kids was did you do the best that you could and are you happy with what you did you know the efforts you made if not you know what to do you know just put more effort into it and you know sometimes you're going to give your 100% but you're not going to get 100% and that's okay wow so... i think that's actually incredible i just want to repeat that like did you do the best that you could and are you happy with what you got um because i guess yeah. i mean i think telling the children is like very very powerful but i think it's something we could even use you know for ourselves like because you also mm -hmm. said like you will never be good enough like no matter what you do and i feel it doesn't even matter i mean i think it's even harder if it comes you know from the outside and people like your mother and the person you want to be loved by the most kind of test that but i think a lot of people mm -hmm. can relate that we actually have this self talk all the time telling ourselves i could have done better and i'm not good enough and uh, i hear that from my clients all the time stepping back and actually asking yourself i mean yeah have i done the best i could and am i happy with that that's it as simple as that because we will never be perfect <laughs> like uh, nobody will as you say there do you also think that you basically had to have um i mean your children in general or maybe very young at that point to be reminded that there was something for you to heal so they could actually trigger your pain so you like had the chance to look at it yeah you know i um my my kids are all young adults right now and uh, my youngest one is 21 and i did um there was a point um i reached a breaking point somewhere along the way and it ended up in me uh separating from my husband for a while because i couldn't i couldn't deal with everything you know my husband was uh working a lot and i was alone and i was miserable everybody was miserable in the family and i wasn't able to connect you know to reach out but it's because i wasn't able to connect with me and uh during that time during the separation that's when you know i had a lot of different talks with my kids about what was going on and uh everything and um i you know made amends with my kids you know uh that's something that i had to do for myself and for them and there are still issues in there and that's okay with me i had to i have to accept that and hope for the best and hope that 
time will heal because they do have their own healing to do with that. And uh, I was a, I was a child having children and I was, you know, not aware of all the pain and the hurt that I was, um, that I had in me. So, and now they are healing their own pain, which is great because my kids at their age are way farther along the road than I was at their age. So I'm happy for that because they're going to be the one that break the cycle that I wasn't able to break. So I find peace in that for myself and for my kids, because mm -hmm. I see uh, all the, the beauty and the great things that they're going to be able to do. And uh, they're going to be able to live in the peace at their young age that I didn't have. So, yeah. yeah, so that's great. But for me, it was very important to be open with them. And they were teenagers at the time. So they, they were old enough uh, mm. for me to explain to them, you know, more, more in detail as much yeah. as I could. You know? um, but it's not easy to, the one thing I have left to, to do with them is to, take back the, I would say the luggage that I gave to them, you know, mm. without knowing it, that's the, the next step I have to do with them. And uh, just to tell them, you know, I'm sorry, I gave you uh, my pain and I'm taking it back. You don't need it. It's not yours. It's mine. It's mm. mine to carry at you. That's the last the next step I need to do with all of them, mm. because it's something that I realize, you know, it's always something uh, in my search that I, it's the last ha ha moment I had. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I that. think it's, yeah. it's incredible. I mean, that you have, you know, these moments and that you actually, because I think I'm, I'm like very sorry you had to experience, you know, what you had to experience. But I think if you wouldn't have had your journey, you wouldn't have been able to raise your children that way. And even if it was just later, you mm -hmm. said you put some luggage on them and it's not there, uh, theirs. I yeah. still, as you say, they are so much further mm -hmm in their development and their journey, even of like healing and peace than you were at that age. So I think if you wouldn't have gone through what you've gone through, you wouldn't have been able to, you know, have these epiphanies and um, passing that on to your children. I also think, I mean, that goes to like your parents and uh, yourself as a parent, that every parent is always trying their best. And again, I mean, there is no yes. perfection, but, you know, I mean, I guess we can all agree that um, like all parents love their children. And even if you hurt them, you're trying your best to raise them. Right. Yeah. I mean, like your best of your capabilities you had also in, in that moment. And obviously we evolve. And while you were telling your story, I was just thinking that it is actually um, so interesting. If you think, if you look back from on time and how we evolved as humans, and that if you think about it, how we got kind of better and better at everything, obviously, from kind of walking on all fours to everything you can do now. And if you look at technology and so on, but I think if you look at it from like a more spiritual level or like a personal development level. I guess it was probably also your generation or probably also your parents' generation also so different in terms of how you've been raised and like now what you can, you know, pass on to your children. And if you, if I think about like, I don't know, my sister, how she's raising like their children and who they will be in 20 years which is just like incredible because I guess we are on like an incredible journey towards like incredible compassionate and loving human race because, you know, we're yeah. kind of healing our pain from generation to generation and, and passing all that knowledge yeah. on. Don't get me wrong. You know, I, I did, um, I gave my life for my children, you know, um, I did the taxi mom thing. I did a lot of very positive things for my children, you know, but 
the hurt, you know, um, sip through at moments. And, you know, it's not all the time, it's at moments. And um, unfortunately, I know that one of my kids is more hurt. You know, she holds, uh, she holds on more to the hurt than to the positive that happened. Mm. And that is not mine to fix. Unfortunately, it's her own journey. I did what I could uh, to ease uh, her pain, but she has her own journey to go through. And just learning for me, it was, it's, it was the hardest thing to learn to let go, you know, uh, because we don't want our kids to, um, to hurt. And, but you have at some point to let go and say, you know what, I am here for you. Whenever you need, I am here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I had to, uh, unfortunately, yeah, the, the pain is something that when you hurt someone, even though you tell them you love them a hundred times a day, if you hurt them once that day, that hurt that you do is going to have a bigger effect that the, than the hundreds, I love you, you tell them that day. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is something, you know, um, that you have to, to deal with, uh, as parents. And, uh, that goes even for every relationship, because I feel like often yeah. if somebody says, you know, one hurtful thing and we all do that because we are all human beings. And I mean, especially as a mother or like a partner, I mean, we are triggered sometimes and we have our emotions <laughs> and when we kind yeah. of act on them and we say something then yeah that's usually more painful and then we kind of focus on that you know on that kind of one negative thing and that kind of sucks in our mind and it's hard to to forget and to kind of override with a with a positive but I think all we yeah. can do and that's what you said is like self-work I mean if you you know and you're doing that for so many years now And I know so you're working on yourself to get better and better every day. And you said like, you know, your journey yeah. is to, to grow and learn and um, get better every day. And you have a vision for yourself who you want to be in the future. And yeah. I think that's all you can do. Like knowing, you know, you won't go back and you won't do the same mistakes again. And um, you just, you just learn And I think you're right yeah. that, yeah, your, your daughter's journey is her journey. And she also, because I guess like all children are hurt in a way. I mean, no matter yeah. if you're, you know, how good you are as a parent, like there are so mm -hmm. many things that can hurt us. We're yeah. so vulnerable as children and, and teenagers. And I mean, I was a mess as a teenager as well. And yeah. like, I mean, there were times, you know, I hated my mother and I don't even remember why and what she did and what she said. And But again, like yeah. it's her journey and she probably needs that also because she is also here to grow and to learn. Yeah. And if there would be no pain, there's nothing to heal. <laughs> and uh, oh, so oh. yeah. Yeah. And you have to, um, I'm a, tr I'm a firm believer and, you know, you have to keep your uh, heart open because you never know what happens. Mm. You know, uh, I, I said that I separated from my husband and that separation gave me the, the time and the space I needed to put my start to put my pieces together and take care of me because I didn't do that. All I did was take care of my husband and my kids and I lost mm. myself in all of that, you know, I was already lost, but the little part of me that was there, I lost it along the way because I didn't take care of myself. So it allowed me to take care of that. And uh, we eventually got back together. Wow. Uh, and we are stronger than we were in our 20s. Because, you know, we know where we are now, uh, I'm not the same person that when I married, you know, in my twenties and neither is he, but 
we we did the work that we needed to do on each other and uh i was able to be more affirmative of what i needed in my relationship mm-hmm. and what type of you know what i was expecting from him and from myself so we entered the second part uh of uh the second chapter of our relationship very differently than we did when we were in our 20s yeah which mm-hmm. is great that's so yeah. great and so, yeah you know, congratulations <laughs> thank you mm-hmm. you know we've been together for uh, married 27 years and uh we've known each other for 32 years so he's been a great part of my life actually you know yeah. <laughs> he's the person he, he knows me through and through he truly knows the worst of me and the best part of me and he you know he chooses every day to to be there and mm-hmm. i do the same with him you know it's a choice to stay with someone that long every day you choose it you sure. choose to be there and it has to be intentional and to be careful I I now ask my myself, you know, sometimes I, I have days like everybody and when I do that I go like, okay, what is my intention now? Because to it helps me recenter and go like something's out of funk here, you know, the <laughs> the vibration is not good, but what is my intention now? I want to be in the loving uh part of myself so i am more intentional about that i i'm more careful about that not being in the hurt so much and asking myself questions always you know why am i feeling like that and uh it's not always easy to the world is um is crazy you know uh we're running around especially you know if i when you have young kids you run around you want to do it all you want to be the superwoman you know and the superwoman syndrome is something that we have to let go of because it's it's not good for any of us any of us uh, at all and because when we do that we don't take the time to stop pause and say whoa what are my intentions today uh what what do i want for my life uh, am i aligned with you know the type of uh of day i want to to have and we don't take the time to reflect because the world is going so fast you know um especially if the people are working outside of the home it's not everybody who is in uh, personal development you know <laughs> Mm-hmm. So when you're not in that state of mind it's easy to to just put your life on cruise control and you know just go through the motions and not be there present and that's the gift I gave to myself trying to be more anchored and present in my life every mm-hmm. day Yeah that's amazing and i love that about the intention like you can use that in relationship but uh i mean yeah also with yourself ask yourself like uh, i love what yeah. you said um, what is my intention and am i aligned and am i kind yeah. of on on track instead of just living and running and, and functioning without being mindful at all may i just ask you like so for how long have you been uh, separate we were separated for a little over a year okay and we got back together um i think it's seven or eight years ago yeah the key is the time the key is to learn to be good with yourself i think mm-hmm. and um you know i look forward to uh we all we've i've always seen myself getting old with him and uh he is uh he's funny and that that that's something that's important to me <laughs> <laughs> to have somebody i can laugh with because yeah it help ease you know the days but um 
time is something um, to be able, I, I, I don't take it for granted to be with someone uh, for so long because it's truly a gift that we give each other to, uh, to be with someone that knows you so much and uh, that want to still have fun with you and do things with you and explore life with you and, you know, live experiences with you. So yeah, to, to be able to pass the test of time and still have fun and yeah. uh, still feel excited with the people, the, the person you are with yeah. is, it's such a gift. Yeah, it is. It a gift. is. It is do a you gift. Think, do you think you would be where you are now? I mean, with yourself and in the relationship, if you wouldn't have taken that year for yourself? No, no, no. Um, when I left, it's because, uh, you know, we had done the whole thing. You know, we went through couples therapy. I did some therapy on my side, on my own. And, um, we weren't able to connect, you know, uh, the way we used to. And we, since we knew each other, since I've, I've met him, I was 17 and we were friends, uh, you know, for a long time before we started to go out together. So we were really honest with each other. And we always told each other when we were happy, we would teach each other. And when we we're very unhappy, or, you know, uh, uh, unfulfilled by our relationship, we would also tell each other that we were really frank with each other that, you know, um, so that's why it helped. And we were able to last that long before separating because we would always uh, have the hard con conversations, which I think, you know, sometimes it's what is missing. Uh, some people have the hard conversations with their friends on their relationships instead of with their partner. A lot of people are missing because it's not, you know, your friend is not the one who's living the relationship with you. So I never felt that I couldn't tell him anything. So it was always an open relationship uh, conversation with him always. And uh, we, you know, even when we were separated, uh, we continued to have uh, some conversations because he didn't have, uh, sometimes he didn't, he had some hard things as an entrepreneur to go through and he had no one he could talk to. So he would show up at my doorstep and I was like, okay, he said, well, I need to talk. Could you, you know, be my, you know, uh, sounding board. Can I talk to you? And I would say, well, yeah, okay, great. You know, so we always had that relationship um, with each other, but it got to a point that I, I wanted to go back to uh, therapy and he didn't want to. So at that point I had to make a choice because Uh, everybody was suffering from the from the situation. He was unhappy. I was unhappy. If you have unhappy parents, you can't have happy children. So I made the decision that instead of staying in the relationship and uh, ending up resenting him and not loving him anymore, I said, uh, I think we should take a break because you know, to give us the time to find out where we are at and what we want. So, um, and it was great. It was truly, honestly, the greatest really uh, decisions I made for my relationship. I wouldn't suggest that to a lot of people because it's not that many people that can get back together mm -hmm. once they are out of the relationship, you know? So, If you can, you do everything you can to uh, to work on it together before you know uh, you separate, which is what we did. 
Mm-hmm. But the thing is, for me, I had done a lot of work on myself prior to me leaving. And we ended up not on the same page on uh, different things. And my discovery of myself led to, um, you know, wanting to change some rules that we had between each other. And it was hard to, uh, you know, he didn't want to change the rules because it was the rules we had were pretty good for him, but they were not for me. Mm. So, yeah. So leaving was great for me because I was able to put myself back together and be, you know, uh, present myself uh, way stronger. Um, And I learned a lot about myself. I learned that I was so much stronger than I thought I was. So it was good for me. It was good for the family. It was good for my husband. So it was great for everybody, that separation. What's the one thing you did differently in that year working on yourself than you've done before? I mean, what was the main thing which changed? I took the time to truly, I started something basic, as basic as going to the gym and really taking care of my health and taking care of my mental health too, you know, and uh, asking myself the, the right questions. And for me, it was important to take the time to take a look at where did I go wrong? What was my part in our relationship uh, getting to where it was, you know, when I left, Mm. because if I, if ever I wasn't going back to him, I didn't want to repeat that in another relationship. Mm. And if I was going back with him, I didn't want to end up at the same place, you know? So it was very important for me to truly take the time to, I, I analyzed actually what I did you know, what was my part in it? Because it's not, even if, uh, you know, people were like, you're, uh, they were surprised and they were like, well, why did you uh, split up? Uh, Did someone have an affair? Nope. Did someone, you know, uh, nobody was beating anybody up. You know, it was just that we couldn't connect to each other, but we still loved each other, but we couldn't, be there together anymore Mm. and uh yeah and i'm sure that we're not the only ones who are you know who are going through that or went through that you know and uh yeah because i know a lot of people i know a few people that um have divorces or separations and years after they go like well if i knew then what I knew, what I know now, I would have done differently. And, or they just repeat the same thing, you know, they're always repeating the same thing in every relationship they have. And, uh, but yeah, so for me, it was focus on me. What was my part? What do I need to change? What do I need to work on? Mm. Uh, to be the person that I need to be to have the relationship that I want. Yeah, I think that's very interesting because I feel often our ego is in the way. And when we are in a relationship, all we can see is the other person and what the other person does wrong. And I feel like often, I mean, I don't know (laughs) if you can relate, but I've done that too. And I think we all done it. We are like, you know, you, 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 and it's your fault and you should change something. And I think it's just the moments when we are actually taking the time for ourselves and we're like turning inwards. And then exactly like, hopefully after we ended the relationship or we took a break that we can see and ask ourselves, what was my part? And what did I do wrong? And um, yeah, I mean, focus on you in terms of, I guess, self-love and self-care as well, like going to the gym and asking yourself what you want, but also asking yourself, yeah, what is your your part and not the other person? Yeah. And this we can do every single day. I still mm-hmm. do that today because I have bad days that, uh, 
yeah, you know, I, at the end of the day, when I look back and I go like, oh, that was not a, my finest day today, but yeah, but yeah, I take the time to reflect on it though. And if I need to make amends for it, I go and make amends for it. Mm. I don't let things linger. This is something that, yeah, because if you let things linger, it festers and that is, you know, that's when the communication cuts. That's when, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. Instead of, uh, and I went to, at one point in my relationship, I was more uh, in the way of asking, you know, what can he do for me? Because he was working a lot and I was taking care of the kids. And um, I used to say that I was a, a, a married single mom because that's how it was. I was at home with the kids. I, I was at home for nine years with the kids. And um, so everything I was taking care of. But when I got back to, I went back to school and then, you know, got back to work. And, uh, but the dynamic was still the same. Mm -hmm. So I got into a place where I need you to show up. I need you to show up for me. I need you to show up for me. But when you do it like that, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not effective at all. <laughs> you know, it's not a, so yeah, you have to, uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's a saying that we have here that when you point to someone, there's al always three fingers pointing back at you. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, in, instead of now, my focus is more on what can I do for him? And uh, he's like that, too. You know, he's more mm -hmm. um, we're more equally going equally about it than we were before, because before I was the caretaker of everybody mm -hmm. and I took upon that role. Even though I told him at the beginning, I'm not going to be your mom. I'm not going to take care of you. I'm not going to do that because I was at home. That's what I ended up doing, you know, little by little. And the day I said, you know, that's enough. I can't take care of you anymore because it, it was draining me because I wasn't taking care of me. But it's it was just normal for him to to resist and say whoa what are you meaning you know uh he didn't tell me that but his actions were telling me what do you mean you don't want to take care of me anymore you've been doing that for uh you know over 10 years what is going on so you know i i tried to change it but not the right way <laughs> but how Obviously. did you then <laughs> How did you then shift it from, so eventually well, for, you, you got what us, you wanted, I guess. <laughs> for us, it's uh, the separation that did that. Mm. Because when we sat down and discussed uh, getting back together, um, at first, you know, he wanted to get back. And I said, no, because I wasn't, you know, uh, I didn't think that he changed. Mm. And I told him why. I didn't just say no. I told him why. And eventually he told me, you know, uh, when we decided to get back together, I told him, I want this. This is what I want. This is what. And I guess that he felt that my, va my vibration changed because mm -hmm. he said, I know that you are at a place right now that I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. So I want it. We both wanted it to work. And we sat down and had the hard conversa conversation again on what was our expectations on. We didn't dwell on the past, though. You know, we put a line in the sand. We draw a line in the sand and we said, OK, that's the past. Now what we I want, what I need from you as a partner is this. Are you able to have to be there for me? And what do you want me from me? You know, what do you want from me? And can I be the person to give that to you? So we had that conversation. Yeah. Wow. 
I think you are a little bit an, an expert on unhappy relationships. So <laughs> and I'm trying to to summarize what you said. And I think, I mean, one thing is super powerful, actually, the drawing the line in the sand and saying, okay, you don't look at the past, but just look at the future. I think that's what we do in coaching as well, right? I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. like you have to focus on what's ahead of you, basically. So I think that's very difficult, but uh, very brave that you've done that. And obviously it shows that um, it does work though. And then yeah. you mentioned uh, a key for, for happy relationship for you was uh, communication as well. And I guess being honest to your partner, but also being honest to yourself and asking yourself if you yeah, have the right intention or what is your intention when you are maybe not having a super, super good day <laughs> or you're not the best version of yourself. So I love that one too. Is there one recipe or one thing you would suggest people who are listening for like a happy relationship? Well, if you want to have a relation, a great relationship, if you are in a relationship at the moment and it's not where you want it to be, um, I don't think that you need to wait on your partner to be where you want to be at. Start working on yourself and be the person you want to be and show up as the partner that you want your partner to be. And, you know, um, by doing this and showing up every single day as the person you want to be, usually uh, most of the time, the person, it's going to reflect on the person and let your partner give them the space and time to grow at their own space. You can't ask the person to grow as you are because, yeah, you know, we need, we all need our personal space to grow and our own time. Yeah. Yeah. So just keep an open heart and open mind. When you see that the, your partner is doing some work on themselves too, and they are changing, even though it's not as fast as you want, if there are changes that are in there, you know, I'm not saying for someone who's um, in a violent relationship or, you know, something that's very, very toxic, but in a loving relationship that you you have, you know that there is still love in there. Just give yourself the time to grow, but work on yourself. Start your own journey uh, because you only need one of the two person to start the journey yeah. to, uh, to get the ball moving and rolling. Yeah, and that's uh, also so powerful. And I think it's something we hear often, like it just takes one person to change a relationship but something kind of very hard to um, understand and embrace when you are in a difficult relationship. And uh, yeah, again, you always go back to that kind of finger pointing. But I mean, that's also true, like, right? You like three point, uh, fingers pointing at yourself. And I think, yeah, you're the perfect example that it does work to change and transform yourself. So yeah, thank you so much yeah. for But have it have the the when you want to have some change when you start to work on yourself let your partner know that you're starting something mm. so you know they're not thinking because sometimes when you're in a relationship and you know it's not working that great and then you see the other you know starting to take care of themselves and doing you know uh sometimes uh it can lead to thinking oh maybe he met or she met somebody else But that's not the case. So be upfront about it and say, you know what? I decided to start a journey of discovery with myself because I want to improve myself to be a better partner for you. And, you know, if you're on board with it, great. You know, we can do it together. But if not, I'm going to do it. I'm starting now. So mm -hmm. if you see some changes, it's because I want to be a better partner for you. Wow. Yeah, and then goes back to honesty and, and communication. Yes. Yeah, wow, wow. Again, thank you so much for sharing your story. Very, very inspiring. And uh, at the end of the podcast, I always ask the same three questions. Uh, the first one is, what does happiness mean to you? Hmm. 
happiness for me is more of a state of uh, it's a state of mind. And I find my happiness more in gratitude. You know, it's not something because happiness is not something that lasts all day. It's not something that you can feel all day. But um, for me, it, I find my happiness in moments of gratitude along my day. I, uh, I really do take the time uh, a few times during the day to be grateful for something that yeah. is there. Yeah. Even yeah. the hard stuff, because the hard things that happen are occasions to learn about yourself. Mm-hmm. So for me, my happiness, I find it a lot through, uh, through my gratitude for every day. And the mm-hmm. rest is, you know, just happy moments that are there that happened. And I embrace them while they last. And when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. Well, I must say that I'm uh, yeah, feeling a lot of gratitude for our conversation right now, just as you said it, like I do. What do you do to be happy? I try to give more than I take. Mm. I try to do that uh, every day. Give more than I take. That's beautiful. And what was the happiest moment in your life? Oh, gosh. I have a lot. I would say... The days my the days my kids were born are mm. days that if I want to feel a truly strong happiness and gratitude in life, I always go to to these three beautiful, wonderful, magic days mm. when my kids were born. Yeah, it's yeah. I just want to ask uh, actually how many you have for three and what are their names? It's Alexi. Uh, mm-hmm. I have a son, Alexi, and the two daughters are Chloe and Rose. So if you are listening, um, your mother is incredible. <laughs> and <laughs> I just uh, wanted to say that, uh, yeah, and very, very inspiring woman. So don't be too rough on her. One last question. Is there any inspiring book um, you read you would like to recommend? I read uh, lately, the last books I read was uh, Believe It from Jamie Kern Lima. I find her story to be uh, good, you know, very inspiring. Actually, you know, she's a very authentic and and a true person. So uh, that was good. Um, there's a, I'm reading so much lately and some of them are in French. So <laughs> it's hard for me to, to say the titles, but um I had uh, also, uh, I love uh, Brené Brown work. Mm-hmm. Brené Brown talks a lot about uh, vulnerability, courage, and leadership. And uh, I just love the way she, you know, she, uh, she talks about it. She, she's doing research, but it's, um, it's very empowering to, to read uh, the way she explains it. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, yeah. Anything Brené Brown. I like it. Okay, nice. I will put these in the show notes for people to find. And also, uh, yeah, how can people uh, find you? I will put that in the show notes as well. Well, you f- can find me on my website at www.guilainemartin.com <laughs> or on my Instagram at guilainemartin. Yeah, I will put that in the show notes for people to find. Ah, yeah. Dylan, it was so, so nice to talk to you today. Thank you so much for all your time and your wisdom and for, yeah, being strong and being brave and sharing your story and living that life you do and passing it on also, helping people and, yeah, for everything you do and you are. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. I bless your heart. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's episode and please give me some feedback. I'm doing this podcast for you. So I'd love to know what you want more of. Should the episodes be longer or shorter? I would love to have some feedback from you. If you like the podcast, please review it, like it, share it, subscribe, whatever you need to do. I really appreciate 
every one of you. I know time is the most precious thing we have and I really appreciate that you are spending your time with me. So I wanted to make it the most valuable time for you I can. I wish you an amazing day no matter where in the world you are. I see you here next week. Love and Namaste.